Right, and welcome to our chapter 6, and you'll notice right away that this booklet looks a lot different. Uh, it's from a, a different source, so I, d I didn't create this one, but I think the uh, person who did create it made a, did a very good job. Uh, the cover page, this is showing, uh, previewing some of the things that we're going to be doing very soon. Looks a little scary, but I'm pretty sure you can do it. Uh, I like this cartoon here. Uh, the middle step says, then a miracle occurs, uh, just um, implying that we really need to show our steps when we're doing this. It's all about the steps this time. Uh, on the back of the first page, of the, the back of the cover page, uh, the learning outcomes in this unit, uh, I guess we could fill that in. Uh, the learning outcomes is, well, how about this? We'll just say uh, chapter six. This whole big booklet is for chapter six. Uh, and down here, this, uh, don't worry about these, those outcomes. This is uh, the BC provincial uh, outcomes. They, they code them all with letters and numbers. But if you look here, this is really what's interesting is the, um, this is the only unit that we're going to be doing today or the only piece of it. So we're going to be doing only for Chapter 6, Part 1a, uh, so we're breaking up 6.1 into two different lessons, and you'll notice that the order switches around a little bit. Then we jump to 3, and then we're going to come back to 2. Uh, just uh, We don't have to do the exact same order all the time, and so we're going to change these things. Here are some answers later on. This is another thing that you're going to notice, is that um, there will be questions assigned from this booklet, and I may or may not add questions from the textbook. So for now we're going to start with, hey, you don't have to bring your textbook right away. Um, but I've got the feeling I'll be adding some more questions yet too. So this is the beginning of the lesson here. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, I think that might be about right here if I center it. Okay, so the reference for the textbook is uh, 6.1. Um, and you can reread the, the, those pages if you find anything confusing. The objective today is to be able to um, hold on a second to be able to uh, use uh, basic reciprocal and trig identities to simplify expressions. So we're going to be using we're going to be talking about the reciprocal. Uh, identities and the quotient identities and we're going to use those to simplify expressions. So before we get started this is a bit of review and uh, I'm gonna say well remember back in the day when we would do a lot of factoring so we're gonna factor an, an, an expression. So you can tell an expression versus an equation. An equation is going to have an equal sign. There's no equal sign here. So there's some math here, but there's no equal sign, so it's just an expression. So how are we going to factor this? We're going to find something that goes into both this and into that. In this case, a will go into both of those terms. So if I factor out the a, then what's left on the inside? So here this will be 1 plus b. Okay, so I hope that works out for you. Um, if we go and say, hmm, now let's do the same thing with uh, trig in expressions in here. Uh, it's very, very similar. Instead of, instead of wherever we see an A, now we here see a sine of X. So I'm going to say this can be simplified to, we're going to factor out the sine of X, and we get uh, 1 plus the cos of X. All right, so very, very similar. So now if we go back to our, my, um, I'm losing my cursor all the time. If I go back to my a squared minus four, we can recognize this as a difference of squares. a squared is the square of a, and four is the square of two. So when I factor it out, I can write a plus two uh, times a minus two. Now some of you will see that pattern. You'll remember it right away from the past. But let's just kind of do a big, a, a bit of a check here. So the opposite of factoring something out is to to multiply it out. So if I use FOIL and were to multiply this back, uh, I would get uh, the first term would be the uh, a times a, so that's a squared, and then the a times the minus two, so I would get minus two a, and then the inner would be a times positive two, so I get plus two a. And then the last is the plus two times the minus two, so I'd get minus four. And so you see what happens, right? Is those the two middle terms, the linear terms, they cancel each other out, and then we get a squared minus four. So you know, good to notice that whenever I have a, a squared here and a squared there, separated by a subtraction, and it's called the difference of squares. That's the pattern. Okay, so we can use the same thing to do this here. And yes, this is a square. One is the square of one. So when I uh, factor it out. I'll put my parentheses in here first. I'll get a 1 
and, and I can do the plus first or the minus first, it doesn't really matter. I'll put the plus first 1 plus the sine of x, and then 1 minus the sine of x. Okay, and so if we were to you know go through that work again, we could uh, backwards and multiply it out, and we would come back to 1 minus sine squared. Okay, looking in near the bottom of the page here, simplify each expression to a single fraction. So when I add fractions, the denominators have to be the same. So, uh, you know, let me even start this off. If, what if I did like 1 over th 3 plus 1 over 4? We'd have to say, oh, I would need to have a common denominator. The lowest common multiple of 3 and 4 is 12. So I would multiply the top and the bottom here by 12. So I get like 4 over 12 uh, plus 3 over 12, right? So how did I do this? Here, here I multiplied both the top and the bottom, right, times 4. And this one times 4, so that I would get a 12 on the bottom, right? And here I multiply the top and the bottom times a 3. And then after I got that put in terms of uh, 12s, then I can add them together and I would get 7 over 12. Okay, let's do the same thing uh, with our a's and b's here. So my lowest common denominator is gonna, actually going to be a times b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator times b and my denominator times b. Right? Here I will n multiply both the numerator and denominator by a so that I get a common uh, now it says b a b times a and a times b is the same thing, so my answer here will be, well, what happens when I add a b and an a? I may as well put them in alphabetical order. I'll say a plus b all over a b. All right, now let's try to do this version over here, where I have cos x and sine x. So what I will be multiplying uh, the top and the bottom by, I will multiply the top times the sine of x and multiply the bottom by the sine of x. Uh, very squishy. And over here I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the cos of x. Over the cos of x. And so my answer will be in the numerator sine of x plus the cos of x uh, all over. Now again, uh, cos times sine or sine times cos, I can put it either way. Um, I guess I well, kind of like sine x cos x. Doesn't matter. Both are correct. All right. So um, moving on to the next question, I've got one over a uh, minus a. Uh, so uh, here's a fraction with a denominator of a, and here this is just a whole number. We can think of this as a over one. And again, maybe I'll have to erase my uh, erase this thing here. Okay, so um, if I'm going to multiply uh, this so that I have a common denominator of a, then I have to multiply the top times a and the bottom times a. All right. So what am I going to get? I will get. Uh, I'll just rewrite this statement here. I'll get one over a minus a squared over a, and then when I combine those, I'll get one minus a squared all over a. Similarly, over here on the other side, I can think of this as uh, over 1. Oh, I did the same thing. I'm going to have to erase this. Just erase that little because I need to do some work here. So uh, I'm, I'm going to multiply. I want a common denominator between cos x and 1. The common denominator is going to be cos. So I'm going to multiply times the cos of x here over the cos of x. So I'll multiply something times 1. And I will get, so I'll write underneath here, I'll get 1 minus the cos of x minus cos squared of x all over cos of x. So I will get 1 minus cos squared x all over cos of x. Okay. Um, some words here. It says simplify the following complex fraction. So we're going to be simplifying uh, this complex fraction over there, a over b over a over d. Uh, remember from, is it grade 8? I don't know which grade it is. Maybe it's grade 8. The dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is going to be the same thing as um, 
a over b times, so the reciprocal of a over d is d over a. So I'm going to get uh, ad over, I'll put this in alphabetical, alphabetical order, over ab, and then what happens is my a's are going to uh, cancel each other out here. So really at the end of the day I get d over b is my answer. Okay, so similarly, now when we put the scary looking sines and cos and things like that here, I'll say that this will be the same as uh, the sine of x over the cos of x times the secant of x over the sine of x. Oh, pardon me, it sounds like I got a doorbell here. I'll be right back. Okay, and now you see that we can cross out the sine of x from the numerator of this fraction and the denominator of that fraction and so that we get for our answer the uh, secant of x in the numerator over the cos of x in the denominator and so there's our answer. Um, just before we finish the page we have one last piece here. Uh, are each of the following uh, expressions correctly simplified explain? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you just to pause the video and think it over. I'll give you a hint. One of them it's yes and one of them it's no. So uh, pause now and I'll be right back. Okay, so looking at this one over here, the answer to one on the left is, is it simply uh, correctly simplified? Uh, yes, it is. You, you can do that. You can split these up. If you have a over uh, a plus b over c, it's the same thing as a over c plus b over c. It's it's kind of like the backwards of a uh, thing of what we did over here, right? Uh, if I said um, from this step, once I had multiplied the numerators by b or the, the b over b and I multiplied this one times a over a, uh, from this step here, it looks like that, I could to do the reverse step would look like separating them, isn't it? Take, taking these two and say a over a plus a over a b plus b over a b. It's the same thing. So yes, you can do that. The one on the left, and so of course, then you know that this one is going to be no. You can't. So what's the matter? You can't split up that denominator. Uh, don't don't I don't know. Split the denominator. Not really a, a math term there, and um, I hope that that makes sense to you. Um, I'm just going to pause here because sometimes having a, too long of a video isn't so good, so I'll stop and then you guys can uh, get a little break and come right back.